Proxmox VE has a really useful graphical user interface that allows you to manage nodes and virtual machines. There's no separate management software to install, and most of the things that need to be done can be done through a web browser. But these days it's all about automation, and fortunately the developers have provided a REST-like API that we can use. Now, for me, the automation tool of choice is Ansible. But how do you configure Ansible to manage Proxmox VE? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, the first thing to do is to install SSH Pass on this computer that I've got, which is running Ansible. So I'm just going to copy and paste in the command, which is going to be sudo apt install SSH Pass dash Y. And dash Y at the end is just basically to avoid having to answer a prompt. So I'll hit return. And then off it goes and downloads the software and installs that. So the reason for that is initially we can only connect into the hypervisor as the root account and we'll get prompted for an actual password. Why well, I don't want to store that password in a configuration file. I actually want to get prompted for that password when we're running Ansible. And that's where SSH pass comes into play. Because what's going to happen is Ansible is actually going to connect to the actual server and then it will get prompted for a password. So what SSH pass does is it allows that password that we've entered to be passed on uh, to that actual authentication request. The next thing we need to do is to onboard our Proxmox VE servers. In other words, I want Ansible here to actually manage them. Now, I don't want it to log in as root. I want it to log in using its own user account and I also want it to use SSH key-based authentication. And what we're going to do is to actually get Ansible itself here to actually set this all up. So the first thing I need to do is to create an inventory file. And I'm just going to call this one inventory. And paste in the details of our actual Proxmox VE servers. But I'll group them together under this section called PVE nodes to make it easier to identify them all. I want to set up some defaults uh, for Ansible itself. Uh, to do that, you create a file called ansible.cfg in the folder uh, that you're running Ansible from. The settings that I want, at least for now, are this line here, which basically is to, uh, to do with the Python interpreter. You can get warning messages if it doesn't find the actual interpreter in the expected place, so I'm just telling it to ignore that. And then when you're logging into a computer for the first time using SSH, you usually get a prompt about fingerprint and recognition. So I've got that host key checking option disabled because it doesn't really make much sense or isn't really practical when you're running this sort of thing against multiple computers. So we'll save that file. Then what we're going to do is just check to see if Ansible can actually log in now. So using the Ansible command, we're telling it that we want this to apply to all those computers that come under that PVE node section that we've got in our inventory file. Then we're telling it what the inventory file is using the dash i parameter. And then we're also using the dash m parameter to tell it which module to run, uh, run. And that's going to be ping. I then need to use the root account to log in. So I've got dash dash user equals root. Then I've got right at the end is dash k because I wanted to prompt me for the actual password for root. So I'll hit return. It wants the password now, so I'll just put that in. Now I'm just going to wait and there you go. So it's been able to actually successfully log into all three servers. So it isn't just a ping command like on your typical computer where it just sends out a ping request and gets a, a reply back. It does actually log in, so that's great. But obviously we want to actually log in using our own account. So I'm going to create a playbook, I'm just calling this pve underscore onboard.yml. Copy and paste in the details for this playbook that we're going to use. So this is going to apply to all computers that come under that section, PVE nodes. I wanted to install a sudo package, so that's why I'm using the app module here. Uh, I wanted to update the cache first, and I do want to make sure it's got the latest version, so even if it's already installed, it'll get updated. I want to create a new user account. Now I'm calling it Ansible, but I would suggest using something less obvious. I also want to make sure that the shell is uh, actually set to bash. Otherwise, if I ever log in as that account, 
you can get cosmetic errors in the actual prompt, for example, which can be a bit confusing. So I want to make sure that does get set. We want to use SSH key authentication. So that's why we're going to upload this public key to that uh, Ansible user account we've created. I also want Ansible to have pseudo rights. And one way to do that is to actually upload a file to this folder here, slash Etsy slash pseudoers.d. So I'm going to tell it to upload a file and it's going to get renamed to Ansible. And then we're going to get the permission set once it's uploaded. Now, because you've actually told it about a file, I need to create a folder where it's going to look for files called files, funnily enough. And then we're going to create our actual file that we referenced there. And then I only need to put this one line in for this specific user, which is basically I need to tell it what the actual user account is. It's going to have access to all commands, so it'll get elevated privileges of all uh, actual commands. But I've also got it set so that it doesn't get prompted for a password because it's just not going to be practical if I want to be running cron jobs, for example, with Ansible. It's just going to halt if it's going to be a prompt for a password. So that's why that option is disabled. You say when somebody logs in as Ansible, it can get pseudo rights without having to provide a password. So we'll save that file there. Next thing you want to do is to actually run that playbook. But at the moment, we can only do that as root. So we're using Ansible playbook. We're telling it the actual playbook to run. We've got to point it to our inventory file using dash i. Again, we've got to tell it what user account to use using dash dash user equals. Then we've got the dash k prompt again, a parameter rather at the end to prompt us for that root password. So I'll provide that. And then off it goes. So it's, it's going through a process because I didn't disable the option to gather facts. And then it's going to start going through this process of installing the sudo package and so on. So We'll just leave that because it'll probably take a bit of a while to do. So it has finally finished. It's gone through all the process. It's run through all of our tasks. And you can see how it's been able to gather information, install the sudo package, create the user account, upload the SSH key, upload the file to that sudo as folder. So it's, it's actually finished that process now. But the question now is, can we actually get access to those computers, but this time using our Ansible? Uh, user account. So this time I'm going to use the ping module again. So kind of similar. I mean, we run the Ansible command. We get it to reference the PVE nodes to define the actual computers we want to run this against. Dash M to specify the module, which is ping. Dash I to tell it what inventory file is. In this case, it's just inventory in the local folder. We're not going to use root this time as the user account. We're now using Ansible. So dash dash user equals Ansible. And this time we're using the actual SSH keys for authentication. So I'm actually pointing it um, to my uh, private key uh, for this Ansible user account, which for me is in, in the home folder. Uh, within there, there's a .ssh folder and the actual private key. So if you ever want to reference what your private key is, you put dash dash private dash key. So hit return. And there you go. So Ansible can now log in using that Ansible user account using SSH key authentication. Now, although Ansible already has access to our Proxmox VE servers through SSH, I actually want to manage Proxmox VE itself through the REST-like API. And for that authentication, I want to use a username and an API token. So to set those up, we need to go to Proxmox VE itself. Then we'll select data sender. Then underneath permissions, we'll click on users. Then we'll click add to create a new user. We'll put in the name of the Ansible account that we created earlier. Reason being is that by default, we're referencing the Linux PAM as the realm. In other words, the underlying Linux operating system for authentication. It's why there's no password option here. And that's what we're going to stick with. Now, it's up to you if you want to fill in these extra fields, but for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to click on add. I then need to give this permissions, so we'll click permissions from the drop down menu here. We'll select user permission. For the path, we'll select the root folder, in other words, forward slash. For the user, well, we'll pick the user we've just created. And then for the role, we'll select administrator. 
then click on add. Create the API token, we'll click on API tokens, and then click add to create a new one. We'll select the same user, and then we need to give this token ID some sort of name. I'm just going to call this one Ansible-Token. Now, what I'm going to do is disable this option, privilege separation, which is enabled by default. Reason being is if I don't, I'll have to actually manage user permissions separately to token permissions, which to me is just extra work. I don't particularly want them uh, specifically because I'm only going to be using the username and the token to log in. I'm not going to be using a username and password to actually log in. And in fact, I can't because the actual underlying uh, Ansible account in Linux doesn't even have a password anyway. So for me, there's no particular gain that I can see in this case of leaving that feature enabled. Now, we've got an option to expire this actual token after a certain period of time. That is a good security practice. Idea being is that if the token gets stolen, well, it's going to expire after a certain period of time automatically, maybe before you even notice it's been stolen. If a, a user actually leaves and somebody forgets to disable their account, well, again, the token's going to expire. So for that reason, I'm going to click on the calendar. I'm going to push this out a few weeks and I'm going to set the 18th, for example. Now, one thing I'll point out is you're not going to get any reminders about this expiry, so you're going to have to set up some sort of um, manual reminder to basically tell yourself when to renew tokens, for example. But it's still a very useful actual security feature, even though it does give you that extra work. Now, it's then up to you what you do. I mean, you could push the date out uh, to extend it if you're you know, reasonably confident that the token hasn't been stolen, for example. The alternative is to generate a completely new token, similar to what uh, GitHub does, but just means you've got to update Ansible. So it really comes down to your own security tolerances. Either way, what I'm going to do now is click on Add. And now we've got an actual API token. Now, we want to make a note of all of this information. We'll need it for Ansible itself. But as it's warning you here, this is the only time you're going to see this actual secret. Do make sure you keep a note of it. As the name actually suggests, it is secret. You need to keep it secret. Put it in a password manager, for example. But for now, we have to put it to one side just so that we can put this information into Ansible. But either way, we've now got our authentication set up to log into Proxmox VE through the REST like API. Now, in order for Ansible to actually be able to get access to the REST like API on Proxmox VE, I need to install an additional package, specifically a Python package known as Proxmoxer. So, to do that, we're going to create a new playbook. I'm just calling this one pde underscore install underscore proxmoxer.yml. And then I'm just going to copy and paste in the details. So, there's not really a lot going on here. I just want this to be played against all of the actual computers that come under this PVE notes section. I want to make sure that the repository cache is updated to make sure we get the latest version. And then we're using apt to install Python 3-proxmoxer. So I'll just save that. And then we'll run this playbook to actually install the software. So Ansible playbook, the name of our actual playbook, dash i to point it to our inventory file, dash dash user equals to tell it we want to use the Ansible uh, user account, and then dash dash private dash key, and point it to our actual private key so that we can log in through SSH key authentication. So I'll just hit return. So it's off gathering facts. Then it'll go through each of those computers, as I say, to update the cache. And then it'll install the actual Proxmox software itself. And there you go. We've now got our Python package installed on all three nodes. Now, the last thing to do is to actually test if this all works. In other words, can I get Ansible here to connect into our Proxmox VE cluster and using that REST-like API create a virtual machine for me? Well, what we're going to do is to create a new playbook now, I'm just going to call this pve underscore create underscore vm dot yml, then copy and paste in the details. 
Now, I'm not going to get into redundancy. I want to keep this example as simple as possible. So for that reason, I'm only targeting one specific host in the cluster for this. I don't need root access, so it'll become a set to false. To speed things up, I'm disabling the option to gather facts. Now for the task itself, I want to make sure that Python 3 here gets used as the actual interpreter. So I've got a variable section here where you've got Ansible underscore Python underscore interpreter, and that's set to the actual path where that Python 3 interpreter will be found. Then what we're going to do is to use the Proxmox underscore KVM module to actually create this virtual machine. So what we need is the actual user to log in with, which is Ansible at PAM for me, token ID, which I called Ansible dash token, the actual secret for that token, which again, as I said, has to be kept secret. In my case, I don't really mind this being in the public domain because it's just a demo. And by the time this video gets uploaded, this will all have been changed anyway. I also need to reference the actual host to actually connect into. So although we've got Ansible connecting into a server in the cluster, we're then connecting into Proxmoxer to then get access to the REST like API. So in this case, I'm just pointing it to the same server that it's already, uh, Ansible itself's already logged into. Now, I do have to tell it where the actual virtual machine needs creating. In other words, which node in the cluster to create this virtual machine on. So I've just picked out one, which is PVE demo one, which just happens to be the same computer in this case. And then at least what I need is a name for this virtual machine. So I'm just calling it VM test. So we'll save that file. Then what we'll do is we'll actually run that playbook. So I'm using Ansible dash playbook, pointing it to the playbook we've just created, pointing it to our inventory file. So even though I picked out a specific IP address, we've still got to reference an inventory file to be able to run this. And then need to tell up the user account and then the private key to be able to log in using SSH. Now you could simplify all this. I mean, all these sort of details could go into the ansible.cfg file, for example, but I'm just trying to keep things simple as possible here within this demo. I'm now going to hit return and it should now go and connect into uh, Ansible. Then it should then use Proxmoxer to actually tap into the rest like API. And as you can see, as far as you can tell, it's actually now created our virtual machine. So if I go back to the GUI, we now actually have a new computer. So it's, it's actually picked the next available VM ID because I didn't specify one. But as you can see, the actual hardware spec on this is very minimal. But the whole point about this is I can now, as demonstrated, create virtual machines, for example. So I can tap into this REST-like API and start to manage Proxmog's VE through that. Now, you might be thinking, what's the point? I could have created a virtual machine much quicker than this through a web browser. Well, that is true, but think about the bigger picture here. Once you have the initial installation of Proxmox VE done, and there is the potential to automate that part, Ansible can then build the cluster. It can then create the templates and use those to create all of your virtual machines. Assuming Ansible is maintaining the configuration of those virtual machines going forward, you don't need to back up those virtual machines, only your data and your Ansible files. Now, that is going to save you a lot of disk storage space, both locally and off-site. But it also saves a lot of time because if you've ever dealt with a disaster recovery, you'll know it can take a while just to get your hands on the backup files, let alone restore the computers. And Ansible could rebuild the entire cluster much quicker than it would take to restore things manually. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button, because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.